first time joining us um, thank you for for tuning in um, you guys are if it is your first time you're probably wondering um, lost and found that's kind of a I don't know what kind of name is that for a church well we are a church because we do congregate together in a building and and you know have fellowship and and we teach the word and and all of that good stuff that and and offer some resources hi guys and um and things like that to help the community so we do gather together as a church however our ministry is our heart is for lost for the lost and just like jesus you know his heart was for the lost he would leave the 99 behind to go after that one. And that's our heart here at Lost and Found Ministries. And that's why we chose that name. If you're familiar, um, you know, just as a reminder, our church is based on Luke 15, um, the story of the prodigal son. And, and you know, I'm not going to preach on that, of course. And some of you, again, if you're new, don't know, I'm Pastor Trish. Yes, I'm a pastor. Um, I have to say that because, you know, there are some Christian churches that do believe that women should not be pastoring. But, you know, being a pastor is all about having a heart for the people and being caring for the people's hearts, for shepherding them, for leading them. And Pastor and I, we co-pastor together, Lost and Found, and we... You know, we our heart is for you guys. You know, those of you who attend our church, those of you who started joining us live um, ever since we started, you know, this whole social media um, thing, <clears throat> you know, we, we are concerned for you guys. We love you guys. And one of the, the best things about the story of the prodigal son is that it's a picture, you know, of of when we get lost, when we go astray, you know, when we can't find our way you know that's what happens when you're lost right um things aren't working out in this world um fear comes you're scared you know things are happening um your children are acting up your you know your loved ones are you know are in trouble and they need help we need help we needed help my husband and i we needed help and we knew that we were taught early on that God would always be there for you. If you need help, turn to Jesus. He will be there for you. And like in the story of the prodigal son, he'll be there with open arms, you guys. He'll be there waiting. He is waiting for you to return to him. And and on our heart is just that's why we started this church. That's why we do this ministry. You know, some people get a little bit misunderstood and misguided. Um, you know, they think, you know, I don't get it. You know, you, you guys are supposed to be helping the lost. Um, and they can view that. Their perspective can be a lot of different types of perspectives. But I always have to remind Pastor that remember why we started this. We started this because we know that we were lost. And we needed help to find our way back home to Jesus. And we got that help. We, we sat under a good teacher of the word. We, um, a Holy Spirit filled church. Um, and we learned how to stand on this truth. This truth. No other truth. Amen. There aren't many ways that lead to one place. No. The Bible says there's only one way to our Heavenly Father, and it's through Jesus. And Jesus is the Word, right? So we are a Bible-believing, Holy Spirit-filled, tongue-talking, believing in the gifts of all of the Holy Spirit, and we believe in teaching and loving and healing and the miracles. We believe in everything that this book says, amen? So, I don't know, you know, I was just, you know, praying this morning and I just felt led to let those of you who don't know who we are and what we're about, this is who we are. We're here to help the lost. That's our ministry, amen. That's what God has called us to do. We're, we, we, we need to just give you a guide back home to, 
to our Father. Amen. So, um, gosh, you guys, I I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to be preaching pretty soon because God's been you know really stirring some things up in me and and I just feel really led to share. So pretty soon, I'm sure Pastor could use a break, but he's doing such a great job and we're getting such great response from from his teachings and. Um, you know, it's hard to, to intercept, but you know, we work together. We're a team. God is using the both of us. Um, it's no accident that he put us together and and um, to do this for you guys, for him, for the kingdom. We're just here to kingdom build. Amen. Um, so it's all about him. You know it. And I've gone on and on. Let me pray, you guys. Welcome once again. Good morning. Hello, church family. It's good to see you guys. Um, and while well, I can't physically see you, but I see your comments. I see your comments. So um, anyways, thank you for joining us. Um, let's pray, all right? Father, we just thank you yes, for this time, you, Lord. Lord. We thank you, Father, yes. as your Holy Spirit Hallelujah. fills each and every home and car and place wherever your children are listening in and whenever they Thank listen you, in because it will be a divine time father that they Thank have you, set Lord. aside to spend with you and i call it Thank anointed you, in jesus name yes. i call this time that we spend with you for our spiritual Hallelujah. eyes and spiritual ears to be open and ready to receive you, what you have for us today lord and we just thank you lord for for blessing us with another day for giving us another Glory chance for opening our eyes and giving us another chance to do things your way i thank you in the name of Hallelujah. jesus and thank i'm praying you, for this time you guys let's just welcome pastor i pray that you guys have been worshiping this morning we're going to get back to that as soon as we're able to figure it out because it's important it's important amen all right so let's give pastor um some love amen All right. Well, hey, good morning, everyone. God is good, and uh, his mercy endures forever. Yeah. Amen. And, uh, you know, I hope you just uh, came with uh, with a heart ready to receive with some ears, uh, listening ears. Amen. Um, you know, because God always has a word for us. We just have to be willing to receive that word. We have to be willing to, to, uh, to hear it and to receive it. Amen. So it's good to uh, be back, um, and as I mentioned, uh, I think Wednesday Bible study or, or last Sunday, um, we're talking about uh, getting back to uh, to the church, you know, open and uh, opening our services back up. I, I know uh, that there's restrictions going on, but uh, uh, you know we have the ability to still uh, social distance and and, uh, and to be safe, you know, and for those that. Uh, that uh, are just not wanting to leave their house because they're in fear. Well, you know, we're still going to do things online for you. Amen. We're still going to make, uh, you know, service available for you. But we also want to, you know, uh, offer the opportunity for those that do want to come to church. Uh, and there are people who do want to come to church. So we'll keep you posted. We're praying about it. We want to be led by the Spirit uh, in, in, uh, in making that decision of uh, opening uh, the church back up. Amen. Amen. You know, but in the meantime, there's no reason why we can't come together. We can't, uh, you know, get in the word and we can't uh, learn and grow. Amen. You know, so if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in the gospel of Luke chapter 11. So we'll be in Luke chapter 11. You know, God is good. And, you know, the title of this message is called The Blessed Life. And, you know, I, I hope you, you know, stay plugged in for the entire service so that you can get everything out of the word that the Lord has for you today. Amen. Amen. So here in the gospel of Luke chapter 11, verse 27, the word says, and as at, and it happened as he spoke these things that a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast which nursed you. So you have a woman here speaking to the Lord Jesus and telling him how blessed that he is for, or, or let me back up. He's telling Jesus how blessed his mother is for giving birth to him and for nursing him. This is the statement that this lady is making. That, you know, she says, blessed is the womb that bore you 
speaking of Mary, his mother, who carried him in her womb, and the breast that nursed you. So, so this lady is is speaking uh, in of you know in envy of the Lord Jesus' mother, who, you know, had him in her womb and who, you know, nursed him when he was a baby. Now, before we go to verse twenty eight, I, I got to kind of just pause here because I know that there are some of you that are of the understanding or of the belief that Mary is the mother of God, right? Now, I'm not here to argue with anyone about what you believe. I'm just here to show you what the Word of God says. That, that's all I, I'm here to do. I, I'm a messenger. And, and my goal is to share the Word of God accurately as possible without putting in my own opinion because I do have opinions, and I'll tell you, you know, if it's just my opinion. But my my goal is to share the Word of God in such a way that it's as accurate as possible, because we all know that the Word of God can be twisted. Mm -hmm. Case in point. Case in point. Satan uses the Word of God and twists it. He does it all the time. Do you remember when Jesus had been baptized in Matthew 4? Write this down if you're taking notes. You don't have to read this right now. I'm just giving you a reference. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, Jesus gets baptized. And, and then he goes to the wilderness and he fasts for 40 days. You know, so after 40 days, you know, he's hungry. And guess who's there to greet him in his hunger? Mm -hmm. Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan's there to greet him. Right? And, and, you know, Satan is basically, you know, tempting him, you know, to feed himself, you know. And so there was three occasions where, where Satan, you know, tests Jesus. You know, he at first says, hey, if you're, if you're the son of God, you know, turn this stone into bread, you know. And then, of course, Jesus quotes the word of God and says, man, don't live by bread alone, but by every word out of the mouth of God. And then he goes on to tempt Jesus, but he, 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 you know, he tells Jesus to throw himself off of this, you know, cliff because he says that the, you know, you know, the, the, the word of God says something to the effect that, you know, the angels would, would, would be there for him. Right. And see, he's trying to take scripture and twist it. And this is just one example. Right. The enemy constantly uses scripture and twist it. And that's why, you know, we need to know the word of God, you know, as accurate as we can because people will twist it on us. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate that even churches, some churches will, will, will you know, misinterpret the word of God. You know, and, and I'm, I'm not, you know, uh, you know, a person that, you know, never makes mistakes or never misquotes anything. And if I do misquote something or I misinterpret something, because it can happen, it can happen. I'll come back and I'll let everyone know, you know what, hey guys, you know, I shared this scripture and you know what, it, it, I, I, I didn't get it right here or, or this is what it really means or, you know, I'll come back and, and correct it. Thank God it don't happen very often, but once in a while, right, I may misquote something and I got to go back and I got to correct it. Right. But it's not intentional. OK, it's not intentional, whereas the enemy will misquote scripture. Mm -hmm. OK, so so anyways, I, I say all this as we just read for those just tuning in. We're in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verse 27, where the woman, you know, speaks to Jesus. She comes from a crowd, raises her voice and says, blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that nursed you. So she's telling the Lord Jesus you know, wow, your, your mother's blessed because she carried you in her womb and, and she nursed you when you were a baby. Well, she's a blessed woman, right? And indeed, she is a blessed woman. Mary is a blessed woman. Amen. We're doing a little, we're going on a little rabbit trail here because this isn't the message. The message this morning is the blessed life and we'll, we'll get to it. But see, we have to, we have to, you know, raise this point here. And I want for those who never gave it much thought, to think about this for a minute here, where I'm going. And stay with me here where I'm going about Mary. Some people believe that Mary is the mother of God. Okay? Some people believe that. And if you are a person that believes Mary is the mother of God, let me just ask you, what scripture 
What, what, what context does the Bible say that Mary's the mother of God? That's all I'm asking, right? But I want to share just a few points with you where the Bible over and over again emphasizes that God does not have a mother. See, in, in the scriptures, the Bible tells us that, you know, God, right, you know, it is, has no beginning and no end. He says, I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. Those are the, the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. No one comes to the Father, or excuse me, no one, you know, let me back up. I'm, I'm getting excited here. I'm getting excited. He says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. There was no one before me or after me is what, is what the Lord says, right? So in other words, he has no beginning, he has no end. So if God is telling us that he has no beginning and no end, right? And so who's the mother of God, right? Point, first point. Second point is in the book of Genesis, uh, the, the, the word of God tells us that God made man in his image. And so when God made Adam and Eve, stay with me here, right? Stay with me here. When God created Adam and Eve, was Adam born to a woman? The first people on planet Earth. How was Adam created? He was created from the dust of the earth. And God breathed life into his nostrils. Eve was created from his rib, right? And he gave her life as well. So the very first people on planet Earth did not have a mother. Think about that for a second. Why didn't they have a mother? God tells us that he made man in his image. Well, God does not have a mother because he says he's the beginning and the end. No one comes before him or after him. He made man like, like him. Yes, but every you know, person after Adam and Eve came from you know, a, a man and a woman. Yes, definitely. But this is something deeper here. Amen. right? This is something deeper here. And let me share something with you that Mary herself says. All right? Stay with me here. Stay with me here. Let's go to Luke chapter 1. We're going to come back to Luke 11, but go to Luke chapter 1. Right? Because we, we have to clarify something here. In Luke chapter 1, verse number 46, this is Mary here, the mother of Jesus. Right? I'm not calling her the mother of God. I'm calling her the mother of Jesus. Because even though she gave birth to Jesus, Jesus, you know, he was God in the flesh. He had divinity going on and he had humanity going on. All God, all man, all at the same time. Okay? In Luke chapter 1, verse 46, Look at what the word says. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant, talking about herself, for behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. And that is true. Mary is blessed, right? For giving birth to Jesus. But does that make her the mother of God, right? Does that make her the mother of God? It does not, right? And we could go on and on, but I just had to make that point. And what I want you to do, if you're a person that believes Mary is the mother of God, I want you to, you know, to ask yourself, right? And say, well, well, what scripture says that Mary's the mother of God? Yeah, she gave birth to Jesus. There's tons of scriptures that say she gave birth to him, but does that make her the mother of God? She is the mother of Jesus, the son of man, right? The son of man, right? And so we have to ask ourselves, right? How did Jesus get in her womb? Because remember, she was, you know, Jesus, you know, was put in her womb, right? Mary was a virgin. She never knew a man, but she got pregnant, right? This is what the Bible tells us. It was a, a supernatural event, right? That she uh, was a virgin and God put Jesus in her, in her womb, okay? Okay, so, so the point being is this. She did hold him in her womb, give birth to him, but that doesn't make her the mother of God. It makes her the mother of Jesus, the son of man. But anyways, for time's sake, I just had to make that point. You know, pray about it. If you believe Mary is the mother of God, that's fine. But the thing is this, is that scripturally speaking, that's not accurate, right? And I also want to make a point. If, you're, if you've been praying to Mary, I, I would say don't, don't do it. Because biblically speaking, the word of God tells us that we only pray to one person, and that's God. We don't pray to no one else. We pray to our Heavenly Father. We pray, you know, to our Lord Jesus because they're one in the same. God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. We don't pray to anyone else, okay? And, and you know, we can look at scriptures that tell us that, right? 
that God is a jealous God, right? And, and that he wants us to only, you know, pray to him and no one else. Okay, I had to make that point because here, let's get back to Luke 11. You know, because there are people that believe that. And I just want to, you know, have those people that do believe that to say, you know, why do I believe that? Well, I'm sure somebody told you that, but what basis was there for them to tell you that? And, and what basis is for you to keep believing that? Just because maybe mom or dad told you, grandma told you, right? You know, but what's that based on? Well, that's what they said at the church. Well, the church says a lot of things. You know, we, we can pick apart a lot of different traditions that churches have that have no biblical, you know, uh, uh, reference or significance. You know, but that's a whole nother message right there. Amen? Amen? But I just want everyone to think about this for a second. Okay, so we're back to Luke eleven twenty seven, 27. And it happened. He spoke these things that a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast which nursed you. So this woman is envious of Mary for giving birth to Jesus. But look at what Jesus says. Verse 28, we're in Luke 11, chapter 11, verse, that was verse 27. Let's go to verse 28. But he said, Jesus said, more than that, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Jesus made a comment. He made a statement that there's something that is even more of a blessing than a, than a family relationship. And this is what he's pointing out here. He says, more than that, Luke eleven twenty eight. 28, for those that are just tuning in, more than that, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Stay with me here. Mm -hmm. Jesus is making a statement that there's something even more blessed than Mary who gave birth to him, his mother, the mother of Jesus, the son of man. And that is to hear the word of God and keep it. That, that you would be more blessed, more blessed if you hear the word of God and you keep it. Mm -hmm. So this morning we're talking about the blessed life. You know what's interesting? There are some of you out there right now, you're waiting for a vaccine for the COVID-19. You're like, come on, Lord, we, we, we need this, this uh, you know, vaccine, whether it be a shot or a pill or whatever, however it comes, we need a vaccine because I'm tired of, you know, making my own food. I, I, I want to go, you know, to... Uh, Guadalupe and sit down and, you know, I want to have a meal or, you know, I want to go inside the restaurant. You know, I want to go. In, I'm tired of Uber Eats, DoorDash or whatever. I, I, I want to sit down and be served, you know, and, and, you know, I want to have that dining experience. So you want a vaccine. Right. You want the cure. Some of you could care less about a vaccine. You're waiting on a stimulus check. Mm -hmm. You're you're waiting on you're waiting on some some you know some greenbacks, right? Some Benjamins. You you want some money. You want some cash money, right? Nothing wrong with wanting a vaccine or some cash money, but I just want to point something out to you. There's something available to you that's, that's even greater than and has more value than monetary, right? It has more value than, 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 you know, than a health vaccine, whatever it is. There's something available to you that's greater than anything, and you can't even buy it. And that is the blessed life. Mm -hmm. And the Lord Jesus says, if you want the blessed life, there's two steps. Two. Just two steps. Hear the word of God which if you're tuning in right now, you're doing the first step. You're hearing the word of God and, that, and I commend you for it. Keep hearing. But there's a second part that, that many people, they, they, they fall off and that is keeping the word of God. See, we, a lot of us can get the first step down, but we need to work on the second step. Keeping the word of God. You do those two things and you will be blessed. Even in a epidemic with COVID, you know, even, you know, in, a, in, a, in any situation, no matter what 
life throws at you, no matter what, you know, uh, uh, you know, the gates of hell, the pit of hell throws at, there's nothing that can stop your blessing if you're doing these two things. And that is hearing the word of God and keeping the word of God. Amen. It is imperative that you keep the word of God. Then you will see your circumstances change. See, oftentimes we find ourselves in these positions of how did I get here? Well, oftentimes it was by decisions we made. But, but, you know, it's always easier blaming somebody else, right? We want to blame our ex, right? Your ex-husband, your ex-boyfriend, your baby's daddy, your baby's mama. We want to blame them. You know, we want to blame our parents. You know, maybe we didn't have, uh, you know, uh, a mom or dad that has, you know, that raised us. They were in and out of our lives. Maybe they were in jail. Maybe they were on drugs. Maybe they just weren't around. So we want to point the finger at them, right? Or we want to blame, you know, the system, right? We want to blame the man, right? It's, it's the authority's fault, you know, the government, or it's the police department's fault. If they wouldn't have arrested me, I would never have had a record, right? But we have to take responsibility for our actions and stop blaming others. And if you want to be blessed in life, you can't keep looking back. You can't keep looking back and saying, well, what if? What if I would have done things differently? Because you can't change the past, but you can definitely make better decisions to change your future. Can I get an amen? amen. You can make better decisions and change your future. Thank you, Jesus. And that's by keeping the word of God. Yes. That's by applying it. So I want to encourage you, keep hearing the word of God, but now start applying it in your life. Amen? Amen. I know it's not easy because if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Yeah. Amen. Being a doer of the word of God takes work. Yes. It takes strength. You know, it, it, it takes, you know, effort. It doesn't come automatically. You got to apply yourself. Mm -hmm. It is not easy. But the benefits outweigh the cost. Thank you, Lord. The benefits outweigh the cost. Amen. You know, so when we hear the word of God and it's saying something to our spirit, to our hearts, that, you know what, we got to make a change there. And, and, you know, and when we first, you know, receive it and we first start to get it and understand it, it's not always easy. No, it is not. And that's Okay. But just know that if you trust God and say, okay, God, you said in your word, if I do this, that I will be blessed. If I, if I hear your word and I keep it, that I will be blessed. So I'm going to take you at your word. Amen. Now, you have to give God a chance because, see, a lot of people, they don't follow through. Or maybe they may take a step and say, okay, well, I'm going to try, but then they don't, they don't continue on. Well, once again, you got to follow through with God's two-step plan here for the blessed life. If you want to really see change in your life, you got to follow through. Amen. And if you follow through, mm -hmm. you will start to see some change in your life for the better. Now, Jesus. I have to make this, you know, uh, uh, um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a term they use when people are selling products. You know, they got to make this disclaimer. That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For people who smoke cigarettes, there's a disclaimer on the box of cigarettes. It says, can cause cancer, right? But yet people who get cancer from smoking cigarettes, they try to sue the tobacco company and say, it's your fault I got cancer. Mm -hmm. Well, we put it on the box, the tobacco company say. It, it's, it, it's on the box, right? No, but tobacco's addicting, Right. That, you know, there's you know, can you believe this? There's people that have sued, you know, fast food places for being overweight or having medical issues due to eating too much, you know, greasy fast food. And they're blaming the you know, they're blaming the food places saying it's too addicting or it's their fault that they got health issues. And this, hold on. Did I put that in your mouth? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, did, did it? No, but when you cook those French fries and the aroma goes in the air and I'm walking by, driving by, uh, I get put in a trance. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but when I drive by, 
you know, some of these places and they're cooking and you, it hits your nose, it is like something just kicks in like, man, I got to have some of that, right? But it's not their fault, you know, if we have too much of it, right? You know, more than we should, right? So, so you know, the point being here is, you know, we, you know, I have to make a disclaimer in this blessed life. You know, the Lord says to hear the word and keep it and you will have a blessed life. You know, you will be blessed. But it doesn't mean you won't ever have any, you know, any obstacles. It doesn't mean that you won't ever have any, you know, you know, uh, challenges. But he will be with you every step of the way. Can you imagine trying to do it on your own? Amen. Does You know what? It's not fun. But see, when you're going through a challenge or an obstacle and the Lord is with you, you still can have a smile on your face because you know you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You know you're going to get through that situation. You may not have the answer at the time. You may not even be able to see beyond where you're at. But you know that by just trusting in the Lord, He's going to get you through. Amen? Yes. So I had to make that disclaimer. Know that, you know, you still will have challenges, but you're not alone. Amen? Amen. Okay, so... <clears throat> You know, in, in Luke 11, 27, 28, Jesus points out to the woman that there's something even more blessed than a family relationship. This isn't the only time. This isn't the only time that Jesus makes a point about family relationships. See, in, in, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 50, Jesus says that whoever does the will of his father you know, is his mother, brother, sister, right? He's not saying that he doesn't love his, his, his earthly mother and his earthly brothers and sisters, but he's saying there's something more powerful than an earthly relationship. And that is the relationship with our Heavenly Father, doing the will of our Heavenly Father. See, too many times we put more value on our earthly relationships with those that are near and dear to us and it has more of an emphasis or more priority than our relationship with the Lord Jesus and that is a problem right yeah, so so the point being is that Jesus is, is trying to correct this way of thinking by saying hey if you do the will of my father then you're my mother brother sister right and he and then he says here in, in Luke 11 that, you know, if you want to be more blessed, not you, you can't just be hearing the word. You got to also keep the word. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, so I want to share another cross reference with you. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter uh, 48. We'll come back to Luke, but I want to take you to Isaiah in the Old Testament. If you have your Bibles, let's turn there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Right. And we're going to chapter number 48, verse number 17. And look at what, what the Lord says right here, okay? He always gives us good examples, real-life examples, right, when he's teaching, okay? So in Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17, look at what the Word says. Thus says the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit who leads you by the way you should go. Amen. Verse 18. Oh, that you had heeded my commandments. Then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the Hallelujah. sea. Thank you, Lord. See, what the Lord is talking about right here is, is he's pointing out that we got to learn to heed his commandments, yes, to do what he says. Amen. He's saying, you know, we got to learn this because in this particular context here in Isaiah, he's talking about the children of Israel. See, they didn't always heed his commandments. And because they didn't heed his commandments, they had to suffer the consequences, right? And he's telling them here in this context that if they would have listened to him, if they would have listened to him, right, the Lord is saying, that they never would have been taken captive and, and, and you know, they would have been delivered from Babylon and, you know, uh, you, you know, our deliverance would not be necessary from Babylon. 
Now let's flip the coin here. The Lord is saying to you and I that if we heed his commandments, we would not need to be delivered from whatever it is we're dealing with. Is there something in your life right now that you need to be delivered from? Is there something that, that you need the Lord to deliver you from right now? Well, the Lord is saying, if you take him at his word, you won't need to be delivered. Amen. Because you won't find yourself stuck in this situation. But now, if you are in this situation that need to be delivered, what is the answer? The answer is to hear the word of God yes. and to keep it. There you go. That is the two-step solution to your problem. Mm. See, the answer to your problem is, you know, you know, uh, it's not the vaccine for COVID. It's not the stimulus, mm -hmm. right? It, it, it's not, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, another relationship because the one you have is not so good, mm -hmm. you know, with your husband, wife, whatever, right? The answer to your problems is hearing the word of God and keeping the word of God. That is the answer. Amen. This is the answer. Amen. You know, as a pastor, I have the privilege of hearing people's problems. <laughs> right? And I can't put them out there because when they people come to me with their, you know, with, with, with their issues, you know, I, I, I have to, you know, um, keep them private. You know, it's between them and myself and, and they're putting their trust in me, you know, not to go and tell everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. But I'm sharing this because in being, you know, pastoring people and counseling and helping people, you know, I hear a lot of different things. And it's unfortunate when, when I, you know, I, I'm trying to help somebody and, and, you know, they still are dealing with the same problem year after year after year. And I could tell them till I'm blue in my face, you know, what the solution is, but they don't like that solution. So, you know, they choose to just try to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. But yet, the problem still persists and they keep dealing with the same issue year after year. All I can do is continue to pray that God would give them the wisdom to see so they can make that correction in their life. Mm -hmm. I don't stop loving them and, and I, I don't give up on them mm -hmm. but it's frustrating when you see what the problem is but the person doesn't want to see you know what you're trying to show them they don't want to believe it mm -hmm. so the lord is sharing with us here in isaiah chapter 48 we just read verses 17 right through 18 you know that if we follow him at his word and we apply it in our lives, in every situation, whatever that is, that you won't need to be delivered from anything if you continue to take the Lord at his word, if you heed his voice. Look at what he says. I have to say, we have to read this, these scriptures again from Isaiah chapter 48, chapter, uh, Isaiah 48, verse 17. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. Oh, that you had heeded my commandments. Then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. It pays to follow the word of God even when it's not easy. Let me give you another couple scriptures here. If you're taking notes, uh, I'm not going to go to every single one of them, but I'm going to take you to a few. So write down Psalm number one, Psalm chapter one. Read that. Go back and read that. It talks about being blessed, okay? But let's go to Psalm 112, okay? We're going to Psalm 112. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. Okay. Let's go to Psalm chapter 112. And look at what the Word of God shows us here. We're talking about the blessed life. That's the title of this message. Psalm chapter 12, verse 1. Blessed is the man. And I got to say this. It's not just referring to males. It's referring to humans, male, female. Mm -hmm. 
right? Man is not a, a this is not uh, gender specific, right? We hear that terminology today, gender specific. When you see the word man in the Bible, it's not talking just to males, it's males and females, it's human, right? Because woman is man. Woman was taken from man, Amen. right? So this is for females too. So understand that when you read the scriptures. Now, there are a few scriptures in the Bible that refer to males, but for the most part, when it uses the word man, it's referring to male, female, okay? Thank you for that. Mankind. Thank you, Sister Nicoletta. Okay, blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments, verse 2, his descendants, his children, her children, his and her grandchildren will be mighty on the earth. Amen. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Yes, but pastor, my kids are running amok right now. My, my grandkids, you know, they, they, they are not, you know, mighty on the earth right now. And that's okay. That's temporary. Yes, what does the word of God say? It says, your descendants will be mighty on the earth, right? But you got to do your part. Blessed is the man, the woman, who fears the Lord. Fear not afraid, but respects and honors the Lord to keep his word. Amen. And when you delight in his commandments, then in verse 2 it says, your descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. But look at verse number 3. Wealth and riches will be in your house. Amen. And his righteousness endures forever. Yes, thank you. That's the word of God right there. Thank you. God is not a man that he should lie. His word does not return void. So I want to encourage you, keep his word and start to see the blessings Amen. of God. Amen. Okay, let me take you to Psalm uh, 119. Just go over a few chapters here. We're going to go to verse 1 and 2. Blessed are the undefiled. That word undefiled just means blameless. You know, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies who seek him with the whole heart so over and over again we see this pattern that when you honor the lord right when you walk in his ways when you follow his commandments that you're going to be blessed Amen. you're going to be blessed we see this pattern over and over again so if you want the blessed life going back to luke chapter 11 verse 28 hear the word of god and keep it and that equals the blessed life. Yes. Simple. Why do we complicate it? Amen? Amen? Let's not complicate it. See, people are always looking for shortcuts. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the blessed life, there are no shortcuts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are no shortcuts when it comes to the blessed life. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to other things in life, there are shortcuts. And people do take these shortcuts. Right? You hear me talking about weight loss because that's something, you know, Pastor Trish and I have been uh, dealing with the last two and a half years. We're on a, a journey Amen. of better health and Amen. fitness, Amen. right? Jesus, Jesus. And, and there is no magic pill. Now, I know some people have gone to extremes. They've got a uh, gastric bypass and there's another type of procedure you can get, right? But there are, you know, consequences or there are... There's a, I'm trying to think of the word, you know, there could be complications, there could be, um, you know, uh, something negative that can come out of it. Pros if it and cons. Yeah, there, there, there's pros and cons to it. It doesn't always work or there can be some kind of, of um, I'm trying to think of, of the word here, but it escapes me. Complications. complications, you know, when you do these things, the, the, the healthiest and and best way of doing it is just doing it the right way. And that is eating better and exercising. Right? It's a lifestyle. Right? But anyways, there's no shortcuts when it comes to the word of God. We got to hear his word and we got to keep it. Amen? Amen? There's no shortcuts. So now, are you going to continue to let you know, the enemy rob you of your blessings. See, because when you don't do what God says, the enemy robs you of your blessings. It's time to stop the enemy from robbing you of your blessings. Amen? Amen. And that's by doing the word of God. As Jesus says, hearing the word, keeping the word. Blessed life. It equals Amen. blessed life. And you know, 
God wants you to have a blessed life. I want you to have a blessed life. Amen. Right? So all you got to do is apply yourself. Amen? Amen. Right? We've seen in, in Isaiah how the nation of Israel, you know, got themselves in, in a jam because they didn't want to do what God said. And he's telling them, if you would have done what I said, you never would have had this problem. You never would have needed deliverance. Amen? Amen. You know, so God is good. He's merciful. So, you know, if that's where you're at today, you know, you got yourself in a predicament, you need to be delivered. You know, God is merciful. In the words, his word, he says in his word, his mercies are new every day. I want to encourage you to not just hear the word, but keep the word. And you will start to see changes in your situations and in your life. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you, be consistent with the things of God. You know, I try to tell people, get a regular dose of the Word of God. Amen. We offer you, you know, Sundays and Wednesdays, you know, and we're available to you. D DM us, you know, message us, you know. If you need to talk to somebody, you, you need prayer, you have a question, you know, if there's anything we can do, we will do it to help you because we're in this to help you. Amen. We want to see you living the blessed life. So we just want you to know we're there for you. And like I said, just, you know, you can DM us. We're there for you. Well, I, I want to just, uh, you know, encourage you to be consistent in the things of God and you will see change. Amen. Amen. Pastor Trish, can you close us out? So you guys have a blessed week. You enjoy the, this beautiful, you know, California weather. If you're not in California, you know, hey, you know, uh, enjoy the weather that you have wherever you're at because we do have people tuning in from other states and uh, we just call you blessed. Amen. Pastor Trish. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wow, you guys. Wow. That was a good word. I don't know about you guys, but I got my notes right here. You know what? I'm going to talk to my son because he's kind of like our helper when it comes to our social media and online stuff. But, you know, there was a lot of drop the mic moments in this, in this word today. I mean... In the beginning, just bringing up the first scripture, pastor could have just dropped the mic and walked away. Cause you know what? It hit hard. It's this this life of this lifestyle of consistency. It's hard to do, you guys. I <laughs> I am the queen of procrastination. I am the queen of of non regimented things. I mean, it's hard for me to schedule things and it's hard for me to sit down and be consistent about anything and almost everything in my life. However, it's doable because God, but God, amen. Yes, amen. Because it's he's doable. the one who it's a heart thing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so God is so good. You guys, let me let me pray. Thank you, Father, yes, for this time. You, I thank you, Father, for Glory. your word that doesn't return void. I thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit thank that you. moves and works in our lives, Father, and, and gives us the power, the anointing to do the strength, the muscle to do what you have called us all to do as your children on thank this you, Lord, earth Jesus. for your kingdom. Hallelujah. And I just pray that everybody has a blessed day and a blessed week. And we'll see you, hear you, uh, hear from you uh, Wednesday in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right. God bless you guys. I think that one. Oh, the screen just turned.